Good evening and welcome along to the Steve Wraith Lockdown Interviews and uh, welcome to be special guest tonight, Newcastle legend, Rob Lee. Hi Rob, how are you? Steve, how you doing? You right? Good mate, good. Good to have you on. Uh, just let everybody know there is a slight delay just between me and Rob, so uh, I'm just going to ask you questions tonight guys, uh, if you get them in and uh, basically I'll put them up onto the screen. Rob will uh, I'll, I'll get to hear them and, and read them. And then we will uh, we'll hear what Rob's got to say. Uh, first of all, Rob, no takeover yet. Um, hasn't 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 happened yet. But are you expecting? Are you expecting it to happen over the next couple of maybe the next couple of weeks? Uh, well, if, if you, what you've said is a big old by Steve, then yes, uh, uh, it's Newcastle, isn't it? And at the moment, we're in no rush because the games haven't started. So. Um, but yeah, everything seems to be going fine. I mean, people worry about it taking so long, but it's taken 13 years to get him out. So I don't mind waiting another 13 weeks if that's what it takes. So, but yeah, I, I hope it goes through. Um, I hope we get some owners in that want to push the club forward. Um, hope they make the right decisions. Hope they're, they're better than what we've got. Because, because uh, you know, sometimes um, people who come in are not as uh, not as don't say what they're going to do. You know, like, sometimes they're not right, but. It's it, all, all, all the signs are, are very good. The signs are very good. I'm always skeptical because that's what Newcastle um, always something happens to Newcastle. That's what worries me a little bit. But yeah, they, they seem like the right people, and hopefully, they'll get the right people in charge. Okay, Dan Hunt asks a question When the takeover is done and dusted, how big can Newcastle become? New, Newcastle, I've always maintained New, Newcastle is a huge club, a huge, huge club. You know, look at what Man City um, have done over the last 10 years or so. Brilliant. For me, Newcastle is a bigger club than Manchester City. Uh, great support, always have had, um, you know, back in the 90s when we, we, um, we, were, we were riding high. We were flying out all over the world. People wearing shirts all over the world. And you hope that comes back. You hope that the, um, you know, that these, these people um, put some money in, buy some players and, and and get us to be a, a global a global brand again, which is where we was headed under Sir John Hall and Kevin Keegan. Uh, so I'd like I'd like to see all, all of that again. Um, so yeah, listen, this Newcastle can be as, as as big as anyone with deep pockets puts their money in. Okay, Andy Roberts says, look at the top on your wall. Was that the FA Cup final top? No, no, I don't put my own tops up. It's uh, it's Peter Beers' testimonial. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I got one of Peter Beers, Alan Shearer's. Uh, the testimonials I played in with all the all the guys I played with some fantastic players. You know, Pete, Pete was 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 up there, world class player. Um, absolutely honoured to play his testimonials. So um, I, I put it on the wall with all the great stars that were there as well. Yeah, Sean Sturrock says, Lee, which three Premier League players would you love to see Newcastle sign after the takeover goes through? Do you want the realistic ones, or do you want the actually what ones I dream of them signing? Um, well, I think realistic, I would, realistic would be better. I saw Harry Kane mentioned today. I, I, I can't see us getting him, no matter how much money we've got. Um, <laughs> but yeah, realistically, we could go, we could go after many players. I, I, I always like them that they've played in the Premier League before, because um, you know what you're getting, um, and also you know value for money. Everyone keeps telling me I was value for money. Um, and, and, and I, you know, I think when you've got a lot of money, I think sometimes you 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 can be very lax of days and waste it. And, and I hope Newcastle don't do that and pay over the pay over the odds for players that are, that are not worth it and not the right players for, for our club. You know. Okay, Tony Armstrong says, Rob, what manager would you like to see come to Newcastle? Well, at the moment, Steve Bruce in charge. I, I, I'm a big admirer of Steve Bruce. As I said before, when I done last on the podcast with you, Steve, I, I, he's always done very well wherever he's been, in my opinion. You know, he's got teams up to the Premier League when maybe he shouldn't. Uh, once he's got them in the Premier League, they've not been top team. Uh, and he's never had a lot of money to spend. So, who, who knows? You, you give him money, you know, when when, when, a, when a club gets money, everyone thinks, well, we should go and get the, the you know, the pot of chinos and... and the, you know, these world-class managers have done very well, and, and they might do. But you know, I, I'm a great believer in. in I, I think Steve Bruce has, has done well, and I think he needs gives him given an opportunity to. He is given money to see if he can spend it wisely. And see if he's, he's a, listen, I always maintain it. He's, he's a Georgian. I like having a Georgian in charge. 
Okay, fair enough. Glenn O'Neill says, what a player Rob was. Who Who is his favourite midfielder in the and what does he think about our current midfielders? Um, I, I think midfielders are slightly different to, to our high, high play, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Um, you know, everyone likes to, I know it's because of the academies, but everyone likes to tippy-tappy football and, and play in front of people. I, I was one of these that used to run past... Um, I like to see midfield players getting in the box, breaking the net, getting in the box, pass the, pass the strikers and, and, and score goals. Uh, and I don't think you see it a lot these days. You know, probably Frank Lampard and, and Gerard used to do it a lot. Um, you know, you look around now, and there's, there's, there's not many that do it, you know. So and that's what excited, excited me and it excites me with players, players is making late runs in the box and scoring goals. And they have to be able to defend, they have to be able to run and they have to be able to tackle, but... Um, there's nothing. There's nothing better than a midfielder arriving late in the box and scoring. Yeah, good stuff, Craig Foster. How many years do you realistically think the takeover will take the tune to win the league or even Champions League? I mean, it's not going to be an overnight success, is it, Rob? It's going to take time. There's a lot of investment needs in the club, you know, across the board before we start getting to that level. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, listen, it, it, we all know, you know, the club's been stagnant for a long time. Uh, it needs investment, not just in the playing staff. It needs investment in the, in the academy. It needs investment in um, the people behind the scenes. Um, so it's going it's to be, it's going it's to take us four or five years. Um, but it just depends on, on how much money. You can always throw money at, at um the, the, the problem, Steve, but sometimes it doesn't solve the problems, you know. It's, it's about getting the right people in for the club. And if we can do that and we can attract the right players, then a gradual thing. We're, we're so far behind, you know, we're so far behind the Liverpools and, and Man City's, um, even Manchester United. They're, 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 they're years ahead of us at the moment. Um, we've got a lot of catching up to do, but if we get the right investment, we can certainly do it. Okay, Alan White's question: Which team do you think was the best, Keegan's or Sir Bobby's, and who was the better manager? Uh, Keegan's for me was was the best was the best for me. Um, Sir Bobby was a was a was a great guy, great manager. I only had him a couple of years. I had Kevin for five years. Um, I, I loved the way that he played football. Um, he, was, he was an idol of mine, so. I'd have to say Kevin, but it's, it's, a, it's a close run thing in, in the managers. But I think in terms of um, the entertainers and, and uh, Bobby's team, I'm biased, but I, I, I played in both. But I, I think the entertainers are a lot better. OK. Paul's question, which forward do you think we will end up with, Robin? Who would you like to see? Which forward? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just all I want is a forward that can score goals, Steve. I, um, I, I think we've <laughs> we've had a few forwards that can't score. Um, who knows who that's going to be? You know, I thought a little while ago we should have got Danny Ings at, at the time. I think he was he was a good match for us at the right price. Um, now that if we get all this money, and I, again, I just hope we don't waste it on on names. I, I, I hope people do their homework and and look around and and you know try and get the best player for, our, for, for the club. I keep, I keep saying it. Um, sometimes money, you can, we can waste it so easily and I hope we don't do that. Okay. Rob says, how soul-destroying was it to lose your squad number under Rude Hullet? Yeah, it was, it, was, um, it, was, it was pretty bad. I've always, um, again, probably because of Keegan, I've always wore the number seven. Um, I was very proud to wear the number seven, um, but yeah, I, I listen. I, I understand if, if people are not part of a new manager's plans, but I, I, I think um, for somebody to take your shirt away and not tell you to your face, I, I think is um, is is pretty pretty poor, um, pretty crap. And um, but. I, I, I got it back. You know, Kieran Dyer got it back straight away because of the Premier League rules. wasn't allowed to do so. But um, you know, it's it's a. I, I it, it's quite funny because my 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 son had the same thing happen to him at Hearts. He had his shirt taken away at Hearts um, 
by the manager there. So, and um, he ended up um, leaving and going on loan. So, uh, luckily enough, I didn't do that. I, I stayed and uh, outlasted the manager, but and eventually I got my number seven back. Paul Oxley says, "Do you think they'll have another Harry's Hero series? Love the shows. Good laugh." Uh, I, I don't know. I, I we worked, we didn't think they'd be doing a number number two. To be fair, I mean, uh, it got very good reviews, but. A lot of lads are getting older. Uh, legs are sort of like um, bellies are getting bigger. Legs are going. Um, but yeah, no. It, listen, I, I hope so. We'll, we'll see. It's 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 enjoyable doing. It's enjoyable seeing lads again. Um, I'd like to see a few ex Newcastle players in there, but um, they all seem to be Londoners or, or played for London clubs. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, it's good fun. Um, I don't like tobogganing, as, as you probably all know. Uh, won't be doing that again. Uh, we'll see. It's, it's, uh, it's Tom Lynch says, "Did you really believe Kevin Keegan when he told you Newcastle was closer to London than Middlesbrough?" Listen, Kevin Keegan was my idol. I believed everything he said, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he makes he makes more of it than it was. I, you know, uh, he said to me what his words were: "With Newcastle is a bigger town than a bigger city than than Middlesbrough." Uh, and if you want to get home, if you get home to London, I can get you home quicker. There's more planes, more trains. So in theory, it's nearer to um, it, in it's nearer to uh, to London than Brisbane. But I must have missed that joke through. Tell says even Stephen Rob, I'd like to ask Rob if you had a favourite song from the terraces. Was there a favourite Newcastle song during your time at the club? I've lost you there. He said, uh, I would like to ask Rob if he had a favourite song from the terraces. Was there a favourite Newcastle song that you had? Um, well, I, 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 mine were Robert Lee scores on ITV, I think, was um, most of the time they just sang the name, which, 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 which when you hear when you hear your name being sung by that that many people and, and you know and they appreciate what you're doing it's uh, it's an unbelievable feeling and it's a feeling that um you can never get back as well um I, you know i tell my sons the same thing um enjoy what you're doing and, and enjoy the, the idea you get from the crowds because once it's gone mate and you're sitting at home uh, <laughs> you don't get that at home i'm telling you Mup says, what ex-players, managers, would you like to see getting roles at the club when the takeover goes through? Uh, I'd, I'd like to see a few more people helping John Burris with that in the, um, in the lounge. You seem to have about 50 lounges and John Burris are doing them all. So, um, and he's not that interesting, to be fair. So <laughs> I'd like to see a few of the lads from the entertainers years back. And I'm sure they'd all want to. Uh, help that out, um, and I'm sure the fans would like to see some ex-players around. You know, I mean, you go to all these clubs, Arsenal and the Spurs and the Man Cities. They've got ex-players everywhere. Uh, they've all got ambassadors, um, and and I, and I think that's another thing where Newcastle have been lacking. Really, it's um, you know they just seem to be plodding along. Not sort of like. Um, and, and and help the help the fans at games, you know. And, and fans like seeing old players. I go to I go to and my mates go. You know, I go when I go to West Ham. I like seeing the old players around. You know, um, some are even older than me. So it, it's it's a it's a it's a going to a ground and, and watching the games and entertainment. It's a, it's the whole experience, and I think that's all part of it. Yeah. David Hall says, Rob, you're a legend. We loved you. Read your comments in the Athletic last week regarding your experiences with Rude Hullet. What was more disappointing, your world-class goal that wasn't against Brentford or Rude? Rude all day long. Um, <laughs> the Brentford game we won anyway. We won the Brentford game five-one. So uh, uh, although it was, it was a terrible to have it ruled off, and it's, uh, I'm never going to score one again, and I never did. Um, the, the Rude, I, I had ten great years, as you know, Steve, at, um, at Newcastle, and it was. Uh, there was one blemish, which was for a year. Rude Hollett came in. Um, that was probably my uh, my lowest point of um, because I knew I was good enough to still be playing. Um, there was one person at the club that didn't think I was, you know. Um, 
Championship. So, yeah, that 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 without doubt is is, is the, probably the worst time I had on um, on, on time side. It's funny, we had Gavin Peacock on yesterday and he was saying that he was exactly the same at Chelsea. So it wasn't just it wasn't just Newcastle, he was the same everywhere he went. Well, I'm, I'm pleased Gav said that, yeah, because Gav's, Gav's a nice, God-fearing guy. And uh, for him to say he's arrogant, um, I'll, I'll settle for that. <laughs> uh, Alan Davison, what was the feeling like scoring that fantastic header against Chelsea in the 2000 semi at Wembley? I was in ecstasy until Poirier scored again. Uh, for those minutes um, after I'd scored, because I, you know, knows when when Bobby was there, I was obviously sitting in midfield, didn't score many goals. I think um, Gary Speed was the one that used to get forward. So, uh, you know, like I, I'd, I'd read and I'd, I'd heard everyone telling me how long it was since. You know, not only we played well at, at uh, Wembley, but actually the, you know, the last time Newcastle player had scored at Wembley. Um, so it, it was it was an unbelievable feeling when, when the cross came in from the bad cross came in from Alan Shearer, and I I rose and and, and scored a goal. Uh, it was it was an unbelievable feeling. I, I still get people now on, on Twitter saying, uh, you know, how drunk they were in the crowd and and where they ended up, and they they, they still remember these uh, this this. Achievement, and even though we lost the game, um, it was it, it's still a great thing. People, you know, st it still brings a lot of joy to people. Um, but I would, um, I would give it away all day long if we'd have won it. Yeah, Dan says, Rob, which past or present player would you have loved to have played with? Wow, good question. Um, God, my uh, probably um, Kevin Keegan, I would. Uh, I would love to have played with. Um, I, I think he would have been very, very good to play with. Um, George Best, another Bobby Moore. I used to uh, used to love at West Ham. These sort of um, these sort of players, I would um, I would have I'd loved to have played with over the years. Okay, Mark Sargent says, "What do you make of Luke Edwards' talk sport interview? And do you think there's a big problem holding the deal up?" I don't know whether you've heard Luke Edwards' interview. It's you know, I think anybody's interviews at the moment are all. You know they're all misleading because nobody knows where 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 we're at with the deal, Rob. Yeah, I, I, I still I haven't seen it, Steve. Um, as I said to you before we before we come on air, I I, I just take it all with a pinch of salt at the moment. Um, you know, I, we've waited thirteen years to get new owners in. In fact, if I have to wait another thirteen weeks, I'm 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 quite happy with that. So um, let, let's wait, let's see. As far as I'm aware, it's still going ahead. And hopefully these will be the right people to run the club. Yeah, Andy Roberts enjoyed Harry's Heroes. He's asking if your back's okay. He's also said taking part in that doesn't make you miss, in, miss playing football, you know, still. Yeah, it, it, it does. It does. It, it's, 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 very, it's very strange thing because you, you, you go out there and you're playing with the guys, you, most of the guys I've played against and some of them I've played with, you know, with, you know my time with England, but it's it. You sort of like you long to do the things you used to do, and and your, your mind says, yeah, I can still do that, and, and your body doesn't allow you to do it. Um, and I found that a few times. I mean, I've always had a you know since I stopped playing about a bad knee, and, and I have to be careful how I, how many games I play and what what I do with my knee. I mean, he was feeling fine, and I was confident. Bit of uh, heroes, and then me back went. So, uh, I just think it's old age, mate. Yeah, one hundred percent. Corinthian collector says he's got his Rob Lee Corinthian figure. Does Rob have one, and did he like them? I I, I don't have one. No. Uh, yeah, I, I I I loved I loved all that. I, I used to, you know, even when I was young, I used to collect football cards and football stickers, Panini and all those sort of stuff I used to collect. So, uh, yeah, I, lo I love all that. And um, I, re I remember seeing them. I wasn't, I thought my head was a bit big, but hey. <laughs> yeah. Andy Roberts again says, who was your favourite centre midfield partner when you were playing for Newcastle? I've lost you. All right. Andy Roberts says, who was your favourite centre midfield partner when you were playing for Newcastle? 
Um, sorry, Matt. I'm just, I just, all right, just come in here. Right with uh. Oh, you're freezing again, mate. I'll take I'll take you out of the stream and probably bring you back in. That's probably the best thing to do. That's life, huh? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? No, mate. You've you've completely frozen now. Yeah. Are oh, you back? I'll try and join again. Okay, mate. No worries. Okay, guys. Well, tomorrow night we've got Warren Barton. We'll just give Rob a chance to get his technical side sorted out and we'll get him back on. Uh, Warren Barton tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Thursday night we've got Michael Chopra at 6 o'clock. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, Neil Mitchell, the Geordie dentist. Uh, he's going to be back on on Friday night at 6 o'clock. Then Lee Clark on Saturday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and then Sunday is yet to be confirmed. So we've got plenty going on over the next few nights. Uh, don't forget, you can always ask your questions. Please subscribe to the channel, though, and share this uh, Share this as well so other people can join. Uh, it'll be great. Rob's just coming back in now. Uh, that's it, Rob. Are you back with us? I'm back, mate. I'm back. You're back. That's it. We can see you now, mate. That's great. So we were asking you who your favourite centre midfield partner was when you were playing for Newcastle. Um, I was lucky enough to have a few, really. I mean, uh, I, I enjoyed playing with Barry Venison. Um, he taught me a lot. Obviously, he he moved in from midfield, from from right back to midfield when I was in attack in, in the early days. He entertained us, and uh, he done a great job for us there. Um, then I obviously had Lee Clark done a good job. Dave Batty, Gary Speeder, so many, and and also with England. You know, I, I lucky enough to play with Gazza and and, and Paul Ince. Um, so I, I play with many, many great players, and, and if, uh, if I had to pick a favourite, um, I would probably say um, probably uh, I'd probably play best with actually. People would be surprised with Lee Clark, I, um, and then obviously he got replaced by by David Batty a bit later on. But I, I probably have the best time when when Clark is next to me actually. Yeah, no surprise there. Mark Dalton says Rob Lee was in Roy Keane's top five midfielders. Um, which is which is quite a compliment, isn't it, from from Kino? Yeah, he, he doesn't compliment many people. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it all day long. He was um, he was a great player. Um, that that him, you know, Paul Scholes uh, had some good battles with him. Uh, that, utmost respect for him. Uh, I enjoy watching him on telly. Would you believe? I. I, I <laughs> I think he, uh, he he's different, and uh, yeah. So yeah, for Roy Keane to say you're one of in the top five, I, I'll take that all day long. Alan Davison says, "What was it like sharing a dressing room with Tino?" Sorry, mate, I lost that one. What was it like sharing a dressing room with Tino? Uh, different. Yeah, he, he <laughs> speaks no English. Much it. He was funny, funny, funny character. Um, you know, you, 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 most word he said was "mierda," I think means shit. Um, but good to be around. You know, he was um, an, an unbelievable football player when he wanted to be. Uh, if it was if it was cold or or he, he, he got the wrong side of bed and didn't want to play, then he was a, he was a bloody nuisance. But on his day, he, he's you know he had more ability than than most people I've played with. Mup says, "What what result would you change if you could go back? Is there one one result that you could change?" Yeah, I, if I could change one result, it, it would probably be the uh, when we played Manchester United at home when we were. Um, we were going for the title. Um, I think we, we lost. We lost one nil. Cantona scored. We played brilliantly on the night, and and I just think if we would have won that game, or even just not lost the game, I I think we'd have gone on to win the title. I think you know we played so well. Schmeichel was unbelievable, and and should have even when we were in five nil. I I think in that game we could have beaten five nil. Unfortunately, Cantona. Um, Pops up and 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 scores a winner, and I think that game 
gave them a lot of momentum against us. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Tell says, who was at fault when you and Alan clashed heads at Derby? Alan. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> he was, uh, I, you know, Derby, oh, Derby, we were winning 2 0. I think I, I, well, Alan wasn't playing well at all. So uh, he uh, very clever and took out Derby's best player. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I, I was picking. I was picking bits of bone out of my. <laughs> uh, Mark Vagan says, "Would you consider a role at the club after the takeover?" Yeah, well, uh, it depends what it was, really. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to just be around for just doing nothing. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I'd love to be a part of the club. I've, I've. Always, you know, always love the club, always love the air, all of the people are still, as you know, I still go up there as much as I possibly can. Um, love the place. So, yeah, if, if I if I could help in any way, um, then, then yeah, I'd, I'd certainly be up for it. Mark says, one player you could bring back, Shearer or Ferdinand? Well, that's a tough one. Uh, listen, Les was a great player and I... And I I think I, I hopefully I played my part in getting him to, to come to Newcastle when I was at England. I used to just nail him all the time and just say, "You come and join us. You've got to come and join us." Um, and, and I got on great with him, and he was he was brilliant for us. But you know, I think Alan Shearer was. Uh, I, I, I we never see this, but he you know, well class forward, and uh, he was as as good as I've seen as the old fashioned centre forward. Okay. Uh, Craig says, any chance of doing a chat with Lee, Barton and Clarkie on one chat? Well, we'll see, mate. You never know. It, it, it is possible. Uh, Frankie says, has Rob recovered from going on the bobsleigh? <laughs> I tell you what, I, I will never go on a bobsleigh again. Uh, I, 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 was, I was actually there and, and I thought, I'm not, I'm not, and I watched it and I said, I'm not doing this. I'm... Uh, I'm really not interested in doing this. I, I get motion sickness anyway. But I, I had a look and I, ah, I didn't look too bad. I was going too And um, most of the lads had gone and there was Harry wanting to go at the end. And, and I thought, oh, I'll just jump on with, with old Harry at 71. It, it's, it won't go that quick. They'll take it easy. And um, yeah, it was, it was probably 58 seconds, the worst 58 seconds of my life. And uh, I generally chucked my guts up for about an hour afterwards <laughs> uh, Rob what was it like scoring on your England debut at Wembley Matt says uh, listen I, I, I've seen it many times I, I, when I was playing football in the playground when I was a kid you know I think it's one of those things and, and kids will do it now you dream of playing at Wembley you dream of playing for your country and you dream of scoring and, and I, I was very very fortunate to be able to do that on on my all in one day on my debut um you know i waited a long time because obviously i didn't make a debut that was it would be worth today rob i think i'd be worth over seven hundred thousand pounds as a john hall stole me from nick charlton for i'm telling you <laughs> danielle says what do you think um when Kevin Keegan lost his head with the comments he made by Alex Ferguson, of course, that was uh, live on Sky, the, the old, I love it if we beat them. Oh, listen, it's, it's, a, it's a most famous, iconic rant now in, in Sky history, I think. But uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't really bother the lads. We, we, we were on the coach, I think, when it came through. And, and we, we, we were just like, oh, there goes the gaffer again. He's... Uh, if he got if he got his a bee in his bonnet over something, he normally he normally let rip. Um, that's what he did. He, he wore his heart on his sleeve. If he if thought someone was out of order, he'd say. Um, but yeah, I bet he looks back now and and, and even he has a little chuckle. At you, I think. Paul Flanagan says, "Do you feel more? Did you feel more pressure after Kevin branded you the best midfielder in England?" No, uh, <laughs> no, it was a, a, a great 
miss on beat had that much. And I, you know, I was like, it was a huge, uh, you know, I was a huge fan of this. For someone who is your idol, would say you're the best player in the, in, in England. Um, I, I, I loved it. And, uh, you know, to think that he rated me that much, it, it made me feel, you know, 10 foot tall every time I went on the pitch. Uh, you know, you know, he he dragged me from being, if you like, a, a, a guy with his sort of like um, backing and, and not 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 even coaching wise. It was just you know him saying that I'm a good player. Uh, he, he turned me into an international who you know represented England 21 times. Went to the World Cup and. and didn't do too badly, so I'm, I'm, I'm for always in his debt. Steve Hutchinson's given us the old tea party question, which we haven't had all week. Um, Non-footballers, who would you love to take to a, to a tea party, Rob? Oh, uh, uh, let me think. I'd go for Muhammad Ali. Uh, I've always fancied Kylie Minogue, which my wife knows about, so I'd probably take her as well. Um, Tommy Cooper, I, lo- I always loved him. Even Morecambe and Wise, I, I, I think they're, they're, they're great. So, so people like that, people make me laugh and make me smile is, is the people I would have at a tea party. Kylie, though, you should be so lucky, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mup says England to win the World Cup. <laughs> uh, Mup Murphy says England to win the World Cup or Newcastle to win the league. Pick one. Oh wow! Uh, wow! <laughs> uh, God, dear, that's a, that's an unbelievable question. Never, I've never been asked a question. Uh, it, it, it's it's tight. Uh, I don't know. God, um, I think I. I, I Slightly go with England. I'd slightly go with England uh, to win a World Cup. World Cup is, is the biggest thing ever, but um, I would love to see Newcastle win anything. I don't care if it's, if it's a League Cup. To see, to, uh, I'd be very, very envious of, of the players doing it because um, that's just the way I am. I, I, I wish it could have been me. You know, I wish I could have won something. And so I would be very envious of the people that. To, uh, to win some of that club. Fantastic. Sean Paul says, statue at St. James's Park for Rob Lee all day, which is very nice of you. And he goes, uh, Rob, did Alan and uh, Roy Keane scrap in the tunnel after Keane got sent off for trying to punch him? And who would you put your money on to win? Um, I think I think Roy, Roy Keane's a, a, a tough, tough guy, but... Um... Alan keeps telling me he came from the rough end of Nuka. I'm not sure he did. I, I think he was from the gentle end. But um, <laughs> Alan was a, a it was a big, strong guy. Um, it would have been a close fight, I think. I, I think Alan could take care of him. So I never met him, but we used to have a used to fight him oldly, but um, I used to give him a good idea then. But I'm I'm a tough Londoner, so yeah. <laughs> Richard Boyd says, if you could sign one player for Newcastle, who would it be? And thanks for all your years at the club. Uh, no problem for all the years at the club. I, I absolutely loved it. So, um, listen, if you sign any player, I mentioned this week, Harry Kane would be... I, I, I saw Harry Kane playing for Spurs when my sons were playing against him years and years ago before he made his first team debut. And I, I, I even rung Alan. I said, I've seen somebody who's... Who, who, who reminds me of you? And uh, mind you, Alan's words were he's probably he's only three hundred and sixty goals behind me. So, uh, Lee says, "Where's playing? Who were the wind-up merchants from other teams?" Uh, Dennis Walt was a pain in the ass. Um, very good player, but he was he was a nuisance. He used to wind people up. He, he you know, like he'd, when you was on the deck, he'd pull you up and pull you up by your hairs on your on your arms and pinch you. And he was a nuisance. Um, 
Robbie Savage, I, he was a nuisance as well with wind up merchant, probably not as good as a player. Um, Ian Wright could, could wind people up. He was a he was very good at uh, shouting obscenities at you. But um, yeah, I, I think I think it's one of those things that um, you know this day and age we don't see it anymore. We don't see a bit of verbals and uh, I, I used to love all the uh, the verbals and the stuff that used to used to come out. Adam Fox, uh, similar question to what we had before. Would you ever come back to the club as a coach, Rob? Well, again, I, 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 I'd help me where I can. I, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure whoever comes in will bring their own coaches. Uh, they usually do. Um, but as I say, it's um, if, if, if I could work, work for Newcastle in, in any capacity that, that I thought I was doing some good, then uh, I would consider it. Mark Dalton says, when Sir Bobby came to manage, he brought you back in. Can you remember the first conversation with him about it, about bringing you back in? Um, well, I, I think, if I remember rightly, he just sat me down and asked me why I wasn't playing. Um, and I, I, I don't know if he knew he knew I, before I was injured or something, but um, he asked why I wasn't playing. I, you know, I told him we'd had a few barnies and um, he said, well, I want to get you in my team as, as quickly as I possibly can. You know, I think um, he started off playing me 60, 60, 70 minutes and then put me straight in. And, and um, I got on great with Bobby. Um, got on fantastic with him. And, and he had his blue chip, as everybody knows. And, uh, you know, he was he was loved by everybody there. John Ball says, would you have made a move to Sunderland from Newcastle if the deal had been right? No. Simple. Joe Walker, NUFC Simple. dressing room. No. <laughs> Worst dress sense, worst taste in music, least funny and couldn't handle drink. Uh, Barry Burns the worst dressed. Um, God, Nobby Solano, terrible taste in music. All that salsa rubbish. <laughs> uh, who, who was um, least funny? Probably Alan's the least funny person. And he's and he's and he dresses badly. And he's got bad taste in music. So <laughs> I'd pick him for all three. To be fair. <laughs> Brilliant. Keith Gillespie couldn't really handle a drink either, could he? Especially with them drinking games. What's that? I'm saying Keith Gillespie couldn't Sorry, handle mate, a Keith drink either. Keith Gillespie couldn't handle a drink either with those drinking games. <laughs> no, no, Keith, Keith was, uh, Keith was, Keith drunk like he played. Went very, very quick and then run out of steam. And then got obnoxious. <laughs> Craig says, <laughs> Craig says, if, and it's a big if, the takeover doesn't go through, do you think this will cause a, ma a massive lack of fans attending the games? I mean, we've already lost 10,000 supporters, Lee, uh, Rob, uh, Rob, at the moment. So it's, you know, it, it, it could it could well affect the, the support if Mike Ashley was to stay. Yeah, yeah, it's probably the first time they they always threaten them to go to the games, but you know what Newcastle fans are like, they always seem to up. Um and, and up until recently that they they've actually stopped going in their numbers. So yeah, I, I think if Mike Ashley stayed on that I, I think the crowds would stay probably worse than they they are now, you know, with the um, with him staying on. But I, I listen, if, if these people take over and, and I hope they do, the first game you, you won't be able to get a ticket for. It'll be chock block that's uh, as we as we all know steve hutchinson says have you heard anything of razor ruddock since harry's heroes do you know how he's doing obviously he had his uh he had his battles didn't he and he, he had a pacemaker fitted whilst whilst the show was being filmed i lost you again uh have you heard anything of Ray? Uh, have you heard yeah, anything of Razor Ruddock? Pacemaker. For yeah. Yes, yeah, I, I, he, he texts me every now and again. He's had a pace 
to make a fitted and uh, he's doing okay. He's, he's trying to watch weight. I'm trying to watch what he drinks. Um, but listen, listen, uh, Ray, Razor's good fun to be around. He's, he's, he's always been larger than life. Uh, he's always been a character, but I just think um, when you have a scare like that, maybe you have to sort of like hone it down a wee bit now, I think. A couple of personal messages here. Craig Wynn Stanley says, please apologise to Rob when I caught him in the Hilton at Gateshead on the eve of the Man City game back in November. I'd had a few beers and I didn't even get a picture. Gutted. So I'm sure Rob, Rob won't hold that against you. Uh, Peter Henderson also says, can you ask Rob if he wants his DVDs back from his house when he lived in Durham? Why did he nick them? He might have done. <laughs> David Bridget, who was the best player at pool or snooker? Uh, God, um, I remember right, Steve Watts was always very good at, uh, at both. But I think that's because he didn't go to school much, and uh, when he was in, a youngster in Newcastle and, and played a lot of um, pool and snooker, I, if I remember rightly, he was always very, very good. Lee asks, "What was the loudest ground you played at, Rob?" Well, I, I would, I would say, I would always say Newcastle. I'd always say Changes Park. Uh, there are some. Around them, but Ellen Road is, is when that's packed is, is 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 a fantastic stadium to play at. Um, you know West Ham, but the, the the ones that are really loud are, are probably I remember right. They're really tight grounds. You know the, the, the tight grounds, the, the Upton Parks are always tight. Uh, Lip Anfield, uh, the older grounds seem to um, all the older grounds seem a bit of a more more loudness or sort of like. Um, here in the crowd and stuff. Adam asks, uh, what impact would it have if Ashley stayed? Would you think that would happen to us? And, and would he have less interest than he does now? Could he have less interest than he does now? I don't know. Uh, I, don't. <laughs> I don't know how you do that, really. Uh, listen, I, I, I think we all just hope it, it, it's a bit real. I do think everyone, I, even... Mike Ashley surely must think, I hope this goes through now. Surely he's had enough. Uh, surely if he gets the money that he wants from these people, then 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 walk away and you've had some great advertising out of it and, and move on to the next thing. Dan Hun asks, what's your funniest moment while at Newcastle? Uh, oh, I've got lots of, lots of funny moments that I can can't even mention. Um, but I, I remember one when we was doing, we used to do a thing where if you got something wrong or you made a mistake, you had to do um, five uh, five press ups. So all the players, if they did anything wrong, I said something stupid, I'd do five press ups. And I remember Scott Sellers went to take a corner. Uh, and I don't know if it's on telly or not, but he, and he went to take a corner and he, he kicked the corner flag instead of the ball. And uh, we was all laughing. The game was done. We were all laughing. And, and he went down and done five press-ups before he took the corner again. So. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, Andrew Young asks, I remember the Shearer Lee clash of head to Derby. It looked nasty. Is it true that it scuppered their planned night out? Did you have a night out planned? I had a... Um, Alan was... Um, Broke his nose, so he had a big plaster of his nose. I had a big bandage all the way around my head, and we still went out in the evening with um, with Gary Speed and, and Warren and their, and their wives. Um, it looked like a um, looks like there'd been a, a, a car crash going towards the restaurant, but yeah, it didn't stop us. Once we'd had a few beers and uh, we was uh, we was all okay again. But I felt um, I felt a bit my head felt a bit bad in the morning. I know that. I don't know if it was the beer or the or Alan head by me though. <laughs> John asking if there's another series of Harry's Hero. You answered that earlier on. Uh, we don't know yet if that's the case. Joe Walker, do you think Bruce Grobelaw was throwing the 3 0 home game versus Liverpool? I'll never forget your first time through ball. Uh, listen, I, I, I've heard the rumor. There's no way he could have saved any of those. I mean, Andy Cole scored from about a, 
two yards out and every every goal was very similar. Um, if he was, was trying to try, it wasn't through them because he, he had no chance of saving any of them, you know. Um, remember the game so well as well when you know, it's snowing and Liverpool come to town and, and, and we absolutely battered them. Uh, played some great, great football. Um, and as I said, Andy, we had at the time we had Andy Cole who could, who could score goals for fun. So, um, but yeah, I, I can't see him throwing any of those goals in. No. Um, Scott M wants to know who did you have on the back of your football shirt when you were a kid. Well, obviously, he doesn't know how old I am because there was no <laughs> there was no names on shirts when I was uh, when I was growing up, unfortunately. Um, but I, you know, I had a West Ham shirt, I had a Liverpool shirt, um, we had a Leeds shirt, the old yellow shirt from Leeds, many many years ago, and I had some Charlton shirts because my dad was a big Charlton fan. So, uh, but we had no we had no names on the back of them then. Yeah. Colin Wilson asks, do you think Mike Ashley will have or be allowed to have any advertising at St. James's Park? Well, I suppose it depends what sort of deal he's done with these with these people. Um, yeah, you hear rumours that, that some of these deals going to be advertising rights. I don't know. I suppose what sort of like what deal he's done. I hope not. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me. Andy Roberts says, Rob, were you gutted when Keegan sold Andy Cole? Uh, yeah, listen, I, I got on very well with Andy. and He was a good player. I, I think I always trusted what Kevin was doing. And, and uh, we, you know, we knew that he had a plan. We knew that he thought we'd come a bit predictable. And, um, you know, and let's be fair, the minute he could get Les Ferdinand, he went and bought Les Ferdinand. So, um, it, it was, I wouldn't say gutted. I would say um, uh, I was I was disappointed to see him go because he was a, he was a, he was some goal scorer. But you know, Les Ferdinand came in, and um, you know he was his, his two years he had at St James's Park was absolutely. Yeah, uh, Tim says any funny stories that we didn't see on Harry's Heroes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're not allowed to say them. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, listen, it's a group of older, older players from that era uh, all, all getting together and, and, you know, in, enjoying themselves and, and playing a bit of football when they possibly can, telling old stories and, but nothing, nothing changes really. Nothing, you know, you could, you could see them. You know, some of the lads I hadn't seen for five years, but the, the banter doesn't change. It's still the same. Uh, you, you all have your stories to tell and you all have a few, you know, there's always beers involved somewhere along the line. We, we tried to behave ourselves as much as we possibly could. But um, I think when you're at our age and our, our sort of like era of, of, of uh, the drinking culture, I think you um always going to be involved at some stage. Jay Max says, "What do you reckon to the rumours Ashley's taken on Bobby Robson's old club Ipswich Town? Do you think do you think you'll go and you know go and spend some of the money on another football club? I don't think he will. Uh, you would have thought he might have had his fingers burnt when you um, Matt Sticky's out at Newcastle. You, you, you never know. Um, you never know. Some people like the publicity and, and you know the, the, the glamour of, of, of owning a football club. Ipswich, Ipswich is." A, uh, is, is a fantastic, fantastic club. You know, it's not far. It's an hour and a bit from me here. Um, you know, I remember Bobby being there. And I remember their players of the, you know, back in the uh, early eighties, late seventies. Great, great tradition of that club. So, um, and it's been in the doldrums for a long time. When I was a kid, they were always in the um, top division. You know, so. Um, but I would have thought so, but you never know. Lee wants to know: Did you have any superstitions as a player, Rob? Sorry, mate. What? Lee wants to know: Did you have any superstitions as a player? Um, you know, if if, if I if I if we won a game, I, I 
where the, the usual sort of like rubbish, but no, no, no major, major superstitions of going out last or not putting the top on. Or um, I just used to um, used to get on with it. I used to follow the same routine if I did well. But usually, if I did that, then I'd, I'd play crap. So uh, I'd change it straight away. Peter Henderson, who's the guy who's got your DVDs, wants to know uh, who is your all-time favourite player and who is your current favourite player. Um, all-time favourite player was, was um, Kevin Keegan, without without a doubt. Uh, uh, current favourite player, Kane. Uh, he's a exemplary. He's a he's a goal scorer. He's never gets in any bother. He's not trouble. Uh, he just gets on with his job. Loves playing football and loves scoring goals. Adam Fox says, "How's your energy drink going? Any chance of a three hundred million pound sponsorship of Newcastle?" It's not going that well, no. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, Mark Dalton says, "What was Lua Lua like when he was signed?" Uh, Lua was, was a fantastic, fantastic ability, great ability. I mean, uh, the way he twists and turn. He was obviously, a, as everyone knows, a great gymnast as well. But um, I just think he was very young when he came to Newcastle. Um, I think playing with all the you know, players. Play a very difficult game for team. That was, was uh, you know, a strength, great ability to score goals. So uh, I just think he came to Newcastle a little bit too young. Joe Walker asks an interesting question. He says, What has Mike Ashley got right? Uh, wow, good question. Um, I don't know. I think, I think what he tried to do was. was um, was curb the uh, the get the get the club, you know, being able to finance itself. If you know what I mean, it's uh, not rely on other people's or his money, um, which in in theory is a, a decent idea. To try and get the club on an even keel where they what they bring in. Um, but we all know that it's very difficult to do that with, with football. Um, it's a very emotional game. It's not like most businesses, and I think he's found that out. You know, the first thing you go in with. When he's in business, he goes in and tries to, you know, if, 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 if he buys business, usually what's struggling, first thing he does is, is, is try and curb the spending and, and try and get on an even keel. And I think that's what he tried to do. Uh, Joe McClellan says, any chance of Rob saying hello to my partner, Vicky? She thinks he's hotter than Janola. She's dead right as well. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Doug Hall, I'm not sure if it's the Douglas Hall. He says, what was your best game in football? Was it the Antwerp game when you scored a hat-trick of headers? It was, yeah, it's, it's, I've had some great games in Newcastle. I, I enjoyed playing, as I keep mentioning. But yeah, it, you know, for the first time we played in Europe for a long, long time. And, you know, to, to score my first game in Europe, to score after a minute, um, and go on and get a hat trick of headers in, in your first European game was uh, again it's something that dreams are made of really. So yeah, that that's right up there. Good stuff. Which shirt, be it Newcastle or another team, conjures up sentimental memories of a win or a particular goal? That's from Greg. Well, I've still I still um I've still got the shirt from the Antwerp game actually. It was still in the Antwerp game. So, yeah, I've still got that shirt, which all the um, all the lads all the lads signed, um, and and I've also got the ball, which all the all the all the lads signed and Kevin signed. So, um, so it's, it's um, the shirt and the, and the, the ball is. is uh, I, don't, I don't collect many things, but it, that was certainly one of the things I I, I kept. Joe has said that uh, Vicky has gone bright red. Uh, he thanks you for doing that. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Uh, Tom Lynch says, if you could have swapped places with any of your Newcastle teammates, who would it be? Uh, 
Um, well, probably a couple. Really. I, I probably would have swapped with Alan Shearer because he was a learner. Um, but I probably would have cost. I would swap with Sylvia Marrick because uh, his wife was the best looking wife. So <laughs> she must look like Kaylee Minogue. <laughs> Adam Fox says Ben Arthur or St. Maximin. Um, I, I like the look of St. Maximin. I think he, he, he looks lively. He look, doesn't look like he. Um, he looks like a roadrunner. He's sort of like he, he excites players, he excites fans, and, and um, you know, I think on his days he's very good. Um, in the big games and the other games didn't want to play well so so max in for me yeah uh, Ken says when you were playing did you swap shirts with any players if you did which players did you swap shirts with no I, I honestly never never I don't, I don't I never swapped shirts at all um, I got shirts because when we played for England and stuff um your shirts were just a big group of their shirts were banged in the middle of our floor and they took a lot of our shirts. So but I never, um, I genuinely never asked anybody for this shirt. Um, it's just not one of those things. I wish I had now because the shirt's probably worth a few bob, but uh, <laughs> I never, I never, um, it's never sort of like, I know I, you see as their favourite player. Last 10 minutes of the game, I'm going to get a shirt. And, uh, but it wasn't for me. Last question from Sean. He says, who's the player from your time at Newcastle you most stay in touch with? Well, Alan's the one I keep in touch with the most, probably. Um, you know, we still, apart from now, the lockdown, but we still text each other and uh, we used to go on family holidays. Uh, so he, he's probably the most. Jonathan, I'm still very good friends with, I keep in contact with him a lot. As you know, I, I come up and do do's with him and, um, we like a few nights out, so um, probably Alan. Then after that, probably Bez. So, but there's, there's quite a few I'd, I'd still speak to. You know, Clarky, I, I see a fair bit, and uh, Steve Howie, uh, Paul Kitson, I still speak to sporadically. So, still quite a few of the Newcastle players I speak. Yeah, great stuff, mate. Well, Rob, thanks for giving us an hour of your time on such a glorious day. Stay safe with the family, and hopefully, we'll get you back on once the uh, the takeover goes through. No problem, mate. Hopefully the connection will be a little bit better next time. God knows what happened and I uh, hope everyone enjoyed it. But um, I, I did because I can hardly hear what you were saying some of the time. <laughs> You're doing well, mate. You're doing well. Take care. Speak to you soon, mate. Cheers, mate. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye. Great to have Rob on. Apologies for the connection at his end. Not great. Uh, yeah, Andy, I have tried for Andy Cole. Sadly, uh, it's uh, no no joy on that front. Um, working on a couple of others, as I say, this week, um, we are going to be back on tomorrow night with Warren Barton, who usually has a good connection, 6 o'clock. Uh, Thursday night, Michael Shopra will be on uh, again at 6 o'clock. The Geordie Dentist, 6 o'clock on Friday, and then Lee Clark at 3 o'clock on Saturday. So that's uh, the, the next four days lined up. Uh, please give this a share uh, so anyone who's missed it uh, can catch up with it. Please subscribe to the channel uh, and please spread the word. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I will be back tomorrow night, six o'clock with Warren